You have to be hard on yourself, by the way, when you're doing homework problems. You might easily think you got it right and not realize that your answer is different from in the solutions guide. Obviously, when you're working with a tutor, uh, I can be a mean guy and say, no, you got that wrong. So you have to be mean to yourself when you're doing the practice problems because you can, you can be sure the TAs are going to be mean. The TAs are definitely going to look for every little mistake. So you have to do that yourself when you're doing the homework. Okay. So that would give us this. So far, so good. All right. Let's do the last step. That's great. Good. You sure did. Okay. Good. This is our coordination. And remember, once we get to the second step, we don't really keep track of the magnesium bromide anymore. So that's just floated away. All right, so this would be our final product in this case. Uh, what type of functional group, well, what type of functional group is this? Uh, green yarn. Green yarn. start with the green yarn. Good. What is this? Ketone. Yeah, a ketone, because it's a carbonyl carbon attached to two carbon chains. So here we started with a uh, ketone. And what type of functional group did we produce? We eventually ended up with an alcohol after the protonation. So if you think back to the example we did before this, in the example before this, we did a Grignard plus an aldehyde. And we saw that a Grignard and aldehyde gives you an alcohol. Well, now we're doing a Grignard plus a ketone, and we can see that also gives you an alcohol. A Grignard plus an aldehyde or a Grignard plus a ketone, both of those would give you an alcohol. That's good to know, but um, you, uh, it, shouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you forgot it, because you should be able to figure it out by just working through the steps, uh, like we just did over here. Uh, by the way, earlier we talked about carboxylic acids, but we're not going to cover any reactions between Grignards and carboxylic acids. Um, so as far as we're concerned, Grignards are not going to react with them. Actually, we know how a Grignard would react with a carboxylic acid, though. Remember, what does a Grignard most like to do? Deprotonate somebody. Well, an acid can definitely get deprotonated. It has an OH. So the reaction between a Grignard and a carboxylic acid wouldn't be very interesting. It would just protonate the Grignard. So what you need to master for this course is Grignard plus aldehyde and Grignard plus ketone. You need to master Grignard plus aldehyde and Grignard plus ketone. And they're really the same thing. Those, are two, those two mechanisms are the same. They both give alcohols. So this is important for synthesis. Um, let's say you're doing a synthesis problem, and the, the, goal, the goal is show how to produce an alcohol. Well, you should say maybe the way to make this alcohol is to put a Grignard together with an aldehyde or a ketone. All right, so that's why you need to know, kind of think, focus on the functional groups so you know when to use this for a synthesis problem, say. Okay. predict the product's problem. So uh, again, let's try to show the mechanism and the product here. Uh, this is kind of in the shadow, but this is a carbonyl up here. I guess you guys can see that.
Let's go through the rest of this together. You both are using a bunch of good techniques, uh, but you both also made a mistake. So let's go through this together. <coughs> so you erase the covalent bond and put in the adic bond. <coughs> Again, it's good to see that you are numbering. Now, <coughs> Uh, I'm not going to bother numbering these carbons down here because they're not really participating in the reaction. You don't. You want to avoid having too much numbering because that clutters things up, basically. So you have to use your judgment. It's not wrong to number these, but I'm going to avoid them because they're not participating in the reaction. I'm just going to number what was going to be useful for me here. You have to use your judgment on that. Um, one recommendation I would make to both of you is draw bigger pictures. Draw big pictures because we have a lot of stuff in our pictures. We got charges, we got arrows, we got numbers. This is not the area of your life to try to conserve paper. You want to use a fresh piece of paper for every single problem when you're first starting. So you have plenty of space for everything that you're putting in there. Okay. I, in fact, I think if you had used bigger paper, you might have avoided the mistake that we're going to see here in a second. Okay. So let's go along with that. Um, all right. Uh, so we know that uh, the negative charge here is at the tail. It's going to attack the carbonyl carbon because that has a delta positive and kick these electrons off. Now remember, I'm not going to do the one fell swoop technique. I'm going to do the one little thing at a time technique. Well, I'm going to start with the number one carbon. Uh, who's the number one attached to? Well, obviously it's attached to the ring. So I'll go ahead and put that ring in there. By the way, I'm calling this the number seven because you guys were calling it the number seven. Uh, of course, logically, you might call this number two. Okay. Again, remember, these are not all you pack numbers. They're just reference numbers. Um, and again, I didn't bother numbering the other carbons in here as well. I don't think I need those numbers. Okay. Um, so uh, who's the number one attached to? So I now will draw in a bond to the number seven. Now, both of you guys just made the number one identical to the number seven. That's a very natural mistake. You both drew it like that, but that means that you're saying the same carbon as that. Right? Okay. So again, how could you have avoided that? Well, the most important thing is take your time. This, um, if this seems hard, that's because it is hard. And the only way to get it right is really take your time and think about every single bond um, that you're putting in. So one point is we should never have two numbers on the same atom. We should never have two numbers on the same atom. Okay. That's so like. Okay. Like I said, that's a classic mistake. And the only way to start avoiding those mistakes is by doing lots of practice. Okay. So I'll put in the number seven here. Now, who's the number seven going to be attached to? Now, seven is attached to the ring. And the number seven is also attached by a single bond to an oxygen. So make sure you didn't put the oxygen on the number one. The oxygen should be on the number seven. OK. And uh, now I can do the charges, two charges. This is at the initial tail, so the negative turns into a neutral. The oxygen is at the final head. It starts neutral, so it gains a negative charge. And here I can put in the counter ion. I'll draw the magnesium bromide uh, over here. All right, so that would give us uh, that product. OK, so that's that step uh, over there. OK, uh, so now let's continue with the last step. Remember, it's not this oxygen that's at the head, even though it has a positive charge. Because I erased my picture and then ah. I got messed up. Okay, so everything takes practice. Okay, and then that will give us our final product. Okay, good. Um, and again, we're not going to bother seeing what happens to the magnesium bromide anymore. All right, so here is our final product. Uh, so what two functional groups did we start with here? With two cyclic, cyclic, or Grignard and ketone? That's right. <laughs> this is a Grignard. And I don't even care about the fact that it's cyclic, although it's okay to mention that. And this is a ketone, because the carbonyl carbon is attached to two carbon chains. Notice that it really didn't make much difference that they were cyclic for the main reaction. 
right? All that matters is following the charges with your arrows. Uh, the exact shape of the carbon chain doesn't make a big difference. The only thing that the, the cycles did is mean that we really had to take our time when we were drawing the picture. 